Eric Darling here with Darling Data. I don't know why my hair looks the way it does. It's very strange to me. It's clean. It just looks <laughs> plastic or something. I don't know what's happening to me. Uh, anyway, uh, today's video, we have exciting things to talk about. Uh, actually, we have, we have frustrating things to talk about as usual. Uh, in today's video, we're going to talk about how you can use uh, indexed views, sort of like a filtered index. But uh, I mean, that seems sort of obvious, right? Uh, but where I want to talk about using it is, uh, so Microsoft has these three things that they put into SQL Server <clears throat> that are uh, really useful. The problem is these three things uh, don't get along very well. You have indexed views, you have computed columns, and you have filtered indexes. <clears throat> um, so uh, what's awesome is uh, if you create a computed column, you can save your queries all sorts of time calculating crappy expressions, especially if those crappy expressions are in like where clauses or joins or something, but you can't create a filtered index on a computed column. And then you have index views, which are wonderful because you can like make this whole complicated query, uh, like present it as a table that you don't have to like aggregate every single time, which is wonderful that you can't create a, a, a filtered index on a, on a index view. So it's like you have these th things that like should be in this lovely like thruple relationship, just like getting along, everyone's laundry is clean, everyone's got dinner, everyone's happy. You no, know, we all get to like, we get to watch all the TV shows and movies we like, but no, no, we don't get that. We don't get that. We, we, we have like, every, everyone's like separate bedrooms angry at each other, right? It's, it's no good. It's not a good situation. So uh, if you uh, like the content that I create, you would like to support my endeavors. <laughs> You'd like to hear more about uh, non-traditional non database relationships. Uh, you, can, you can become a member of this channel for as little as $4 a month and, and, and make me feel great about myself. Um, if you, uh, you know, don't have four bucks a month, the school bully stole, stole your lunch money, you, you know, it's gone, it's out of your pocket. Uh, if you like, uh, comment or subscribe to, uh, like, like my videos, comment on my videos and subscribe to my channel. Ding! Uh, then, then that makes me feel all comfy, cozy too. Uh, if you are in need of SQL Server consulting, uh, you, 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 might, you might watch these videos and they, they, the, th the, the topics that I cover in them may seem like things that you could use help with in your SQL Server. I am available uh, to do all of these things at a reasonable rate. Mm -hmm. uh, if you would like some fantastic SQL Server training that is far less expensive than what you will find elsewhere on the internet. Uh, you can get all of mine for about 150 USD for the rest of your long, happy life. And I mean, honestly, these this, these videos make great uh, heirloom gifts too. You could leave these to your kids, loved ones, uh, I mean, maybe not even other people's kids. You can give them give them away all over the place. Uh, they're great. They're stocking stuffers, um, President's Day. I don't know. You you name it. Uh, it's all good. Uh, so uh, 2025 uh, still can't say anything about events yet, but uh, there there are some things in the works. So with all that out of the way, let's talk about um, some annoyances with filtered indexes, and computed columns, and index views. So uh, I'm going to go over to um, my crap database, and I'm going to drop a view. Um, and I'm obviously, the, well, come on, zoom it. Kick in, buddy. Uh, we're going to get rid of these two things first because if we don't, uh, we might hit some issues. Now I'm going to create a table. Didn't I just drop you? What's, what, what's happening in the world? <laughs> the drop table if exists, and then it's just like, oh, yeah, the table exists already. Right. <laughs> Thanks, database. Selling me down the river here. Uh, so I'm going to create a table called index view, and that index view is going to have a computed column in it, uh, where I'm just going to multiply uh, the ID column by two. Now we don't even have to put any data into this table to see what happens here. It's just very annoying. Uh, but I cannot create a computed uh, col, or rather, I cannot create a filtered index on my computed column. Uh, filtering it to where not fizzbuzz equals zero without SQL Server throwing up on me. All right. So this is what this is the error we get. The filtered index n cannot be created on table dbo dot index view because the column not fizzbuzz is in uh, in the filter expression is a computed column. Rewrite the filter expression so that it does not include this computed column. Well, I, I, then I wouldn't have a filter expression, would I? 
would I SQL Server? There would be no filter expression. You need to get over yourself and allow the nice people who use you to create filtered indexes on computed columns. I mean, fine, if you need some rules in place for that, I get it, but it should be a thing that you can do. Now, we could, of course, create a, an indexed view, right? And let's say that we, we do that, right? We get, we get real cool. We say, all right, we're creating this view called computed column, and we're going to create it with schema bindings so that we can index it. And then we add a unique clustered index to that indexed view. So now, now we actually have an index view, right? We did this. If I try to create this again, it'll say it already exists, right? So we, we, we index this view. It is alive and existing as an index view. But I can't create, uh, I can't create a, a filtered index on that index view, right? Now, if I go look at what this whole error message says, I'm going to make this a little bit nicer for all of us because I like to zoom in and uh, why, why Microsoft doesn't pretty print error messages and just sends them sprawling across the screen is beyond me. You know, but we all make choices. But uh, the filtered index, NFB, cannot be created on the object dbo.computed column because it is not a user table. Filtered indexes are only supported on tables. Indexed views are not tables, even though they are sort of presented as such when you query them. If you are trying to create a filtered index on a view, consider creating an index view with a filter expression incorporated in the view definition. Well, okay. We can do that, can't we? All right. So uh, one way you can get around this is, uh, of course, by doing this, right? So we're going to change our view. And I'm going to tell you something very funny about index views. Uh, if you alter them, so I have creator alter here. So if you alter an index view, it drops the indexes on it. So if you, if you have an index view with like a clustered index, and maybe you've created other non-clustered indexes on that index view in order to, um, in order to uh, make queries faster that touch the index view. Uh, if you alter that view, your indexes disappear. You have to add your indexes back. So uh, we're going to create or alter this view, and we're going to include where not fizzbuzz equals zero in our where clause here. And now we're going to create our, our, our index. We get to re-index that table. Isn't that fun? It's great. Uh, the problem that we run into sometimes is, though, is that with index views, um, for various reasons, especially if you're on... so. For various reasons, your query, even though it matches the index view, might not match the index view, right? Like, like SQL Server's optimizer might get hung up in one of a couple places. Uh, one, if you're on standard edition, uh, you're probably going to need the no expand hint uh, so that your index views get touched. If you're on any edition of SQL Server, you might have a trivial plan or, uh, well, a trivial plan accompanied by simple parameterization of your query that might mess things up. And um, I, I would say that almost in, on any edition of SQL Server, you should be using the no expand hint when you touch indexed views because SQL Server will, does not automatically create statistics on your indexed views without using the no expand hint. So like you'll have statistics on whatever column you created your clustered index on, right? Your unique clustered index because you created an index so you get a statistics object. But if you touch other columns in the index view, SQL Server does not auto-generate stats on those unless you use noexpand. So uh, if we run this query and we say ask for where not fizzbuzz equals zero, uh, we, we actually, you can see in the query plan that there are a bunch of square brackets in here that I did not type. And there are a bunch of spaces around periods that I did not type. And we have a little parameter looking thing over here, which I certainly did not type. And we have touched our index view right here. Or sorry, we have touched our table called index view here. Remember, our table is named index view and our index view is named computed column. I went through great lengths to make this very clear and straightforward. Uh, and the reason why this happens, if we use a couple rocket science trace flags here, uh, 8607 to look at um, compilation information and 3604 to print that information to the messages tab, uh, we will see over in the messages tab that uh, we got a trivial plan so it's possible with even even if we just got a trivial plan that SQL Server may not have gone to the point of expression matching our query to the index view definition. SQL Server might have just been like, oh, whatever, this is stupid. Uh, but then if we scroll way down, we will have two little messages here. Uh, the query is marked as cacheable, and the query is marked as safe for auto-parameterization. Oh, sad. 
so there are two ways that we can get around uh, this issue, right? We can uh, say where not fizzbuzz equals zero, and we can use the no expand hint, right? And this will allow us to uh, touch our index view named computed column. Uh, even though we have all of this stuff, now SQL Server is like, oh, right, got it, got it. Uh, or we could say uh, where one equals select one, and uh, oh wait, there's nothing in the messages tab there. But the one equals uh, select one uh, prevents. Actually, I should run these next to each other, right? Do this, and let's look at these execution plans. And these both hit the index view, right? These both hit compute. Oh, go away, tooltip. No one asked for you. These both hit computed column. Uh, the one up here, actually, the no expand hint does that? No, it doesn't. Great. So the no expand hint uh, does keep the optimization level trivial and does have this in there, but SQL Server now trivializes our query uh, to touch the index view. Down here where we use one equals select one, we're going to have this additional compute scalar in there, but it's, it's like nothing. And now uh, we will have full optimization and full optimization will be like, hey, we found an index view, lucky us. Right, so good news there. Uh, so if we were to look at uh, this information, the, the trace flag information for either of these, uh, you would see uh, that this is safe for auto parameterization, but we have said to SQL Server, you will not expand our views. So this was considered safe there. Uh, and then if we look at this, and the messages tab, uh, we will not see the simple, uh, the trivial plan information up here, and we will not see, uh, oops, the zoom in too well there, we will not see the, um, the uh, safe for auto parameterization message here. So uh, you can do things with indexed views that you cannot traditionally do uh, with uh, filtered indexes and computed columns. Uh, you do, you can still cannot create a filtered index on an index view, which is annoying as hell, but it is nice at least that you can uh, create an index view that has a computed column in the where clause and then like use that in your queries generally to filter to where that index, to where that computed column hits some values that you really care about. Uh, I've used this a few times over the years. Um, it's certainly not something that I need terribly often, but it is something that when it comes up, it is incredibly useful. So uh, I do hope that uh, you, can, you can take something away from this that you will perhaps use in your, in your endeavors, qu tuning queries and indexes. Uh, stuff like this is especially useful um, if you're on standard edition. Um, you know, a, a lot of stuff on enterprise edition, uh, just using batch mode is like a good enough shortcut to uh, getting good performance on big aggregate queries without having like this additional index structure to maintain. Uh, so oftentimes like, you know, I'll short be like, okay, let's just see where batch mode gets us. If batch mode gets us like, you know, uh, you know, 70, 80, 90% speed up, we're probably not gonna go this far unless we absolutely need to. But if you're on standard edition where batch mode because Microsoft hates you is limited to a dop of two, you're gonna have a bad time. Like it's not, like the, that query, it might, it might at best break even at DOP2 using batch mode, but you know if you're running at like DOP you know, 4, 6, 8 or higher on standard edition in your aggregation query, and index views don't have that limit, limitation on them. Um, somehow Microsoft let that one slide, I don't know. The bean counters must have figured, hey, no one uses these things anyway. Uh, but yeah, like if you're on standard edition, the, the, like, like there's no limitation on DOP when you query index views. So if you have a big parallel plan or something, those might turn out better with uh, an index view than using batch mode. So stuff worth thinking about, stuff worth considering. And um, as always, it's, it's worth protesting outside your local Microsoft office to get them to treat standard edition users with a little bit more respect. You know, with all the, the 2025 announcements that have started uh, bubbling around, I still haven't seen anything about standard edition being able to use more than 128 gigs of RAM, which is just a, a laughable situation in the, the year that we're in. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll get some love on that, but I, I kind of doubt it because, you know, um, you got to pay that friendship task tax. If you don't pay the friendship tax, Microsoft isn't going to be your friend. Anyway, thank you for watching.
I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And uh, in the next video, we are going to talk uh, one more time about index to use, but in a slightly different way, uh, because we have a little bit more to go over with them, don't we? We do. Index views. Who knew? Who knew? Anyway, cool. Thank you for watching.